What a day, what a move. Well, another wild day comes to an end. Hope you guys made some money out there today. But it's back to work tonight, as always. We've got one more day left this week. It's Thursday evening. We're getting ready for Friday's trading session. We have a ton to talk about tonight. Got some big news tomorrow. Had some huge moves on the charts today. And there is no shortage of ways to make money as we go into the end of this week here tomorrow. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video to give you a game plan to make some money on Friday. Before we jump in, and get this party going tonight. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, will ya? Hit that like button for me. I appreciate you guys supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, right? Friday is not going to trade itself, as we always say. Let's get ready to finish up the week firmly in the green. What a move. What a day we saw today. Where are the best trades for tomorrow? Boy, everything looking pretty bullish right now. Oil, of course, is bullish. S&P bullish, right? NASDAQ uh, bullish right now. Very big moves across the board, right? Very big moves here going higher here for the bulls. You know right now the buyers would love to buy some pullbacks right now. We definitely have some pullback opportunities across all three of these markets here. We do, of course, on the NASDAQ and the S&P, right? The NASDAQ and the S&P are both long-term bearish. So we definitely have some reversals, right? Some double top reversals, right? Some popping grime reversals. We get a lot of great reversals I'm watching for tomorrow because, of course, we're still a long-term bear market. And I'll tell you, oil, of course, oil is still very much a long-term bull market right now. So we have a ton to talk about if you're an oil trader uh, because lot, got a lot of great, got, got a lot of great setups watching for oil here for tomorrow. So no shortage of trades on my radar for tomorrow. I'm going to make sure you know exactly how to make some money with these trades tomorrow though before we jump in though we have a lot to talk about here before we jump into each chart i'm going to go over all the trades here in a moment but there's a bunch of news tomorrow that you may not be aware of tomorrow of course is a friday uh you know you're kind of, kind of your typical friday right second friday of the month we got retail sales that is for the most part kind of the biggest uh news within the u.s morning session tomorrow that retail sales of course now we haven't seen retail sales have been affected at all by these by these high inflation numbers. I think everybody's watching tomorrow to see if those retail sales will finally start to fall off a cliff because we saw another record-breaking CPI report that came out today. Uh, remember, we are not trading the news, but we definitely will look at that as a catalyst for tomorrow. That is one thing you don't want to miss. And then... Remember, the, the consumer sentiment number. Tomorrow we have the University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment survey coming out. The last few months, the last few months, this has been a very active uh, catalyst. You wouldn't think it would be. You know, consumer sentiment, 10 o'clock, it's a green. You know, it's not really listed as being a, a very, very big one. But I'll tell you, we have seen a lot of really big jumps, a lot of big moves off that consumer sentiment number. So that is definitely something I'll be watching uh, tomorrow morning as well. So retail sales at 830 Consumer sentiment, those are the two big news reports that we have that we have kind of have on our radar. Now, there's also a lot going on overnight tonight, right? So if you're in Asia, if you're in Europe, you gotta be aware overnight tonight, probably around midnight, sometimes between midnight and 1.30, 2 o'clock Eastern time, we have some inflation data out of China. We're gonna hear from China overnight. They'll talk about their inflation data, right? Pretty much like our CPI report today. We're gonna get the CPI report from China overnight. So be aware of that if you're in Asia and in London. And of course, also too, I, I hate to say it, but T tomorrow is the kind of the official beginning of earnings season, the couple of weeks after the end of the third quarter, right? Tomorrow, we're going to hear from JP Morgan, uh, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, some of the biggest investment banks, some of the biggest banks in the world, right? JP Morgan Chase tomorrow before the open. Right now, of course, next week we'll get into the kind of the meat and potatoes of the earnings season, and we'll talk about earnings more next week. So make sure you tune in to the videos next week. But think about this though: overnight, China right reporting their uh, their inflation data overnight, and before the market opens tomorrow, big big investment banks earnings coming out. This could be a very wild overnight session, and so of course, be careful with that stuff. It's whipping around. In the pre-market, be careful. Uh, uh, you know when you're, when you're talking about the overnight stuff with Asia and the uh, and the earnings. So be aware of that overnight. It might be a, kind of a wild overnight retail sales tomorrow, consumer sentiment tomorrow. 
If I had to guess right now where the best time to beat your desk tomorrow would be, we've seen a lot of action off that 10 o'clock consumer sentiment number. So if you're a busy day tomorrow, I would definitely wouldn't miss that 945 to 1045 block. That might be the cleanest price action that we get of the day because of that important uh, earnings coming out in the pre-market. So that is the schedule that we know about. That's the schedule we know about. Will we hear more out of the uh, nuclear situation with Ukraine and Russia right now? Will OPEC and Biden keep on right chewing each other about the uh, the recent OPEC cuts those are definitely some things we're watching on the sidelines here tomorrow we'll know more once we see it back to our charts though right this is where the money is we know the schedule for tomorrow we know what might be some catalysts for tomorrow but the money is made on the charts guys now whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of them like we do in our trade room make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video tonight because you will learn something new something profitable throughout the entire video video here tonight and you know me I try to save the best stuff all the way to the end so I'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the end so grab some notes take some screenshots if you got any questions hit me up in the comment section let's go NASDAQ we'll go S&P and we'll wrap tonight here of course of course on the mighty crude oil now over the NASDAQ right now keep in mind these are all four that well these are not all four thousand these are all tick charts you can see upper left hand corner you can see all the time frames in the upper left-hand corner. I also put the time frames in the description of the video. Also, to NASDAQ, QQQs, SPY, E-mini, they're all kind of the same stuff right now, right? So everything I talk about on the NASDAQ can kind of be applied to the S&P. The S&P can be applied to the NASDAQ. So these are very interchangeable right now. The NASDAQ, the QQQs, the SPY, and the E-minis. Whatever we talk about on one can pretty much be applied to the other right now. So I'll do my best not to repeat myself too, too much, right? I know repetition is a big part of trading. But I'll try to keep it. I'll try to keep it to a minimum here on this video. Now, where's the money making opportunities for us here tomorrow? There are three key insights here on the NASDAQ. They're a little bit different on the S&P. I will tell you, they're a little bit different on the S&P. You'll see that here in a second. The first one is the bear bias. Now, I know we're not very bearish right now. We're pretty bullish right now, you can see. But look at a four-hour chart. Look at a daily chart. We're still overall pretty bearish right now, which means if the buyers, right, if they can't hold this next pullback, if the buyers can't hold this thing right now, you know where the bears want to go. They want to go all the way back down and take out those big lows. And after a crazy move like today, would anybody would anybody be surprised? No, no, you should not be surprised if the bears come roaring back into these highs. Because as I mentioned in last night's video, the one thing we don't want to do right now is what? We don't want to buy high. We don't want to chase things and buy high because we're still in that overall bear trend. So bear bias, I have to respect the bears a little bit more than I would on like oil right now. Oil is more more bullish. We'll talk more about that as we go. Next key insight, strong move, retested. Strong move, wait, strong move, yep, strong move. What do we always say anytime we have a strong move in one direction? We expect to get a pullback, usually a two-legged pullback, and a retest of that high. Mission accomplished. Now, why is that important? Well, because now it's kind of put up or shut up with the bulls right now. Right now, the buyers, they have to either give us a breakout going higher, and this is very similar on the S&P as well, or we're likely going to see this market rotate down to the next low, which, of course, is this area right there. Anytime I see a very strong move in one direction, Action. We expect a two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. Once we get the retest of the high, now do we break out and go higher? Or do we begin to pull back and start to flush out what could be one big range and we start buying low, selling high, buying low, right? That's kind of the key to that. So as you can see, we got a lot of great areas down here below. And also, too, remember, the buyers definitely have this potential to break out going higher. Third clue, third clue, a very useful clue is a bullish wedge. Now, if you watch my videos, you know how much I love channels. I love channels in trending environments. Very difficult to get a channel to fit in this one. This is one key difference between the NASDAQ and the S&P. You'll see in a moment in the S&P, the S&P looks a lot better for a channel. This one's basically a wedge. Now, wedges. Wedges are not the most common scenario in the world. One thing they tell us, though, is, is that once we, well, they actually tell us a lot. 
So for example, uh, wedges, where the wedge comes together is resistance, right? That's, that's well known as being resistance. We're almost at a major area of resistance. We are pretty much there right now. The second thing is, is that you can trade the edges of the wedges when the wedge is wide, right? Say that 10 times fast. The edges of the wedges when the wedges is wide. Anyways, so when they get narrower, when they get narrower, now there's no more money to make in here, right? So a lot of times we'll get a pretty sharp pullback to basically free up some open space. And this is the third part. The third part is, is the base of that wedge. If you've heard me talk about spike in channels before in this video, right, it's very similar to a spike in channel. The base of that wedge, right, is where we most of the time we'll see more buyers coming in. So as you can see, that wedge tells us that we either need to get a breakout going higher, because again, very bullish right now, or we get a lot of potential down in this area, right, for that, for that pullback here. So what do buyers want? What do sellers want? The buyers want to buy a pullback, right? The buyers want to buy a pullback. The buyers want to buy a pullback or they want to buy a breakout. We have a big, look at the target up here. The next bull target, 11, 7, 29 and three quarters. Look at a daily chart. It's the le it's the next major swing on a daily chart, 11, 7, 29, three quarters. Same idea on the S&P as well. So buyers want to buy breakouts. We'll talk about some breakouts here tonight. Buyers want to buy pullbacks. We'll talk about pullbacks. How about sellers? What do the bears want? Remember, it's a long-term bear bias. What do the bears want right now? The bears would love to get a double top reversal off that high, right? That is a viable trade for tomorrow. And the bears would love to whack this thing, right? And run this thing back down to retest the lows. So now that we know what we're looking at, now that we know what's on my radar for tomorrow, how do we make some money on this stuff now? Okay, it's all about the pullback right now. There's a couple different ways we can trade pullbacks here. And we'll talk about what I'll do is I'll talk about the pullback setup right now. And then later on in the video, I'll talk about the the, the breakout, right? Going higher. So we're going to cover all the bases here across the NASDAQ and the S&P. We'll finish up on the oil. First things first, you want to think about getting down into this area. The key level right now is that 10, 9, 14 and a quarter. Because again, that's the lowest point between that strong move and that retest. That level is a very important level, at least for me it is. What I'd like to get is, is I'd like to get this nice deep pullback. I'd like to go in and trap in some of the bears right now. It's a long-term bear market. And the easiest money you're going to make when you're trying to buy in a long-term bear market is to get some of these sellers trapped and use their stops as fuel. What I'll do in this situation is, is I'll let the bears try a couple times. I like to use what I call the two try rule. Once I have those bears trapped in, I can now think about where their stops are. Think about where their exits are. Think about where their pain is. And I can use those stops as fuel with what I call a failure setup. Now, if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky on this, it'll pop up jump higher and where does the market want to go it wants to go back up and take out that high right as it tries to flesh out this trading range if we're lucky we'll get a new channel coming across that high find that channel low and we can grab that first test right that trap or that failure any of the entry patterns you guys learn in the free trading course right off that low Okay, so obviously I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying it right now, but think about it. We pull back, bears get trapped in. We buy into those stops. We're trying to go back to retest the high. Do we get lucky and get that first test off that channel? I hope we do. Great way to add some more to your position. Great way to re-enter if your stop gets taken out on the trailer and we're trying to go back up and retest the high. Now, here's a slight variation of that that I want you to keep in mind here. If we can get this two try failure to be relatively flat. Okay, you'll see what I mean in a second here. Let's say we take the lows out now, right? We get that pullback now. Let's say we get that pullback, but now what happens is, is it does something like this. It comes up like this and goes one and then right up again. Okay, these happen a lot when you've got a real strong, you know, kind of short-term trend like this. If that happens, I, what I want to do is I have to be very careful not to buy high right now. Remember, if there's one rule you don't want to break, really until this thing turns bullish long term, we cannot be buying high. So I want to use the two try rule. What I'll do is I'll look for a trap. Okay, traps are going to be your best friend when you're trying to buy as low as you can. 
Do you see the difference there, right? So one, we go down the bears once, the bears twice. I'm not buying high in that scenario, right? But if we go lower and we kind of pop back up like that, that's where things get more dangerous because you don't want to take it right here, right? That is a very dangerous trade right there. Why? Because you can see risk is this, reward is this. Okay, and it breaks that it breaks that very simple rule right now. We do not want to buy high. Okay, so if we do end up kind of V bottoming off of it, think about that trap low. Okay, if if you don't love traps yet, you will soon love traps once you take my free classes and learn those setups. Traps are are, are really my bread and butter uh, in our trade room. So we're looking for right, we're looking for that two try trap them in if it's a really kind of a vertical bounce off that. Okay, now. We know now, what if we pull back? How do we sell this thing going lower? Okay, again, I'm going to talk about going higher here in a second, right? So hold on tight for that. What if we pull back now? Okay, and what if those bears, what if they don't get trapped in, right? What if what if the bears just completely blast this thing lower? What if they pull back? They don't try once and twice back up. They pull back and they're like, no, no, no. Let me remind you guys, we own this market right now. What if the market jumps now off that moving average? Where do they want to go? They have one thing on their mind. They want to bury those lows, right? They want to show these buyers a thing or two, I'm sure. I'm sure some bears are waiting to crush this thing going lower, but they have to hold it. Right, they got to hold it. If they can hold it, I can now draw a trend line off that low. I can find a channel off that high. Right, see where I'm going with this? I can drill down. Now, this is a this is a slow time frame right now. I'm going to drill down, and I'm going to find whichever of the entry patterns I can find off that high. Now, one of my one of my kind of one of my kind of hacks, right? One of my techniques that I teach my students is to look for those prior swings. Right, because above those prior swings are where traps are. You'll get above the moving average, right? Get some failures in there. And so again, you guys have you guys have learned this stuff on the free trading course. Keep sending me screenshots of your winning trades. I love seeing you guys making money with the free class setups I teach in the free course. Which reminds me, by the way, I know most of you guys have taken this class already. You've learned all the setups. You're making money with them. If you haven't yet, if you're one of the few folks who haven't taken the free course, haven't learned the setups, I'll put a link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link. The strategy that I teach in that free course will make it so much easier to find winning trades each day. It'll help you easily avoid losses. And most importantly, it'll give you a roadmap to follow, which for me personally, when I have a roadmap to follow, I have a lot more confidence. It is perfect for someone trying to make a jump into full-time trading. If you're taking too many losses, if you're missing too many good trades right now, grab that link, join the free course. That way you'll know what failure and traps look like and most importantly you'll know what a reversal looks like right so we run we jump we find that channel and we're looking for that short going back down again remember to remember when you get those reversals the first leg and the third leg are almost always symmetrical you can see example right here right there's one there's two there's three right look first leg third leg see see that that's the same idea right over here so Keep that in mind. And there's one more reversal, one more reversal. Now, let's say we do get that pullback. And now, let's say we don't pull back to the moving average and blast, right? Now we begin to grind down, right? You know this, you know this one, the pop and grind. We have one of these on oil right now. Beautiful pop and grind on oil for the bulls. Now, if we pop lower and we start grinding down, what do we do? We don't chase it. Okay, we do not want to chase the market lower. We want to sell high. We want to sell that resistance. We draw a trend line off that low. We find a channel up off that high. I know it seems backwards the way I do it like that, but to, trust me, you will soon love this technique. Then drill down, find those prior swings, right? Get above prior swings. That's where traps live. Get above the 21 moving average. That's where failures live, right? As buyers try to buy that pullback. And then speaking of pullbacks, once the market shoots lower, we can grab that first pullback off the moving average. Again, first leg, third leg that will give you a really good idea of where that exit target could be. You know where they want to go though, right? You know they want to go back down to retest the low. So now that's how we buy the pullback and that's how we basically sell the reversal as we go lower. But we are, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So what if we get the pullback, we get that pop back up. Can I, can I sell it back down off that high? 
how, what, what's a breakout look like, right? What do, what if this thing keeps on going higher? What if this is just the tip of the iceberg and this thing rips higher here? Because again, we got we got Chinese data coming out overnight. We got earnings reports coming tomorrow. Let's keep this party going here. Let's go over to the S&P 500 or the SPY, right? Or the SPX. And a lot of you guys are trading the ETF counterparts. And again, right, this will be very similar to the NASDAQ, uh, but it'll be a little bit different, right? You'll see there's a little bit of a difference here on this one. Uh, three key insights. First one is the bear bias, right? Same as the S&P, right? First one is, second one is a big move higher. Now, big move higher. Why is a big move higher? Is a big move higher the same as a strong move higher? No, it's not. A big move higher, what does a big move higher tell me? It tells me that we have to think this potential, this price right now might be seen as being a little bit too high to buy. Right, like anything else, you know, uh, markets are run by human beings. Even even the algos are programmed by humans. We all want to buy low, right? So when I see a big, big move, when I see a really big move without any deep pullback, you know that deep pullback is on the top of our list here for tomorrow. So a big move higher, it's a lot like a strong move higher, right? You'll notice right now, we got that strong move up. They pulled back, right? This is the same thing as the NASDAQ. Remember, anytime we see strong move, they want to retest the high. That means this level right there, that 36, 31 half level is a very, very important area. And again, because it's such a big move higher today, we're definitely looking for potentially a very deep pullback. Now, you can see the third clue, that hidden bull channel. You could also call this a pop and grind channel, right? Pops up, grinds, grinds, grinds. I'm simply drawing that trend line off those highs. This is a little bit more difficult to find. You can see it requires a little more experience, but look at how well it lines up off that low. This creates a very desirable area here now. It's almost, it's, it's the same ultimate game plan as the NASDAQ chart, but in a slightly different way. You'll notice there is going to be a wedge here, but it's not nearly as pronounced, right, as the as the wedge that we saw on the NQ or the QQQs on the previous chart. So a lot of this will be very, very similar based on we know so far. We talked about how we buy it, right? Same idea, trapping those bears, two tries, or if it, if it gets very vertical, use that trap. Same thing. If they hold it and roll over, we find that new channel, right? First leg, third leg, same thing. If they hold it and grind down, you got the channel, right? It's same, same exact thing as the QQQs. I know I promise not to repeat myself too much on this, but sometimes you got to. Now, here's the big question. What if we go higher? And what if we, the big, the big question right now is, what if we get that deep pullback? What if we trap in these bears? right? Bears try once, bears try to, or, or the sharp one, right? Whichever one we get there, right? The bears get trapped in. We run right back up to retest the high now. Now, how do I sell off this high? Well, first of all, where do the bears want to get to? They're going to want to get back to retest that low, right? Always want to know where the market wants to go at this point. And this is where ranges begin, okay? Ranges will begin with big moves up, deep pullback, retest the high. Now, I'm going to ultimately use the same technique here up, up around these highs, okay? The only difference is, is that I have to make sure they take out those highs here and then begin to use the buyer's stops against them. Remember, the smart money buyers, they're buying low, right? These are not the smart money buyers down here, not the ones buying right into these highs here. What you wanna think about here is, is you wanna think about this sequence. As we go back up to retest the high, I want to, again, try to rope in some of these buyers, right? These are the weak hands up here. Once those rookie weak hands try once, remember, lower low, right? Lower low in price. It'll be like this, right? It'll, it'll go up. The buyers will once. The buyers will twice and then collapse back down, right? That's the type of two tries I want to see on this. So we get the one, the two, all those stops now are sitting right below that low, right? All the buyers, when they get stopped out, how do they get out? They have no choice but to sell. Now, we look for that nice, strong signal. You'll learn a lot more about signal candles in that free video course. And then remember, as we go lower, we know where the market wants to go, right? It wants to go back and take out that low right there. So if we're lucky, we'll get that new channel coming down, or sorry, new trend line coming down, channel off the high, and then grab that short on the way back down to retest that low. 
Okay, what you got to be careful though is, I'm warning you, be very careful on these because if this ends up really dropping like this and takes out that low, okay, now this trade right here is it's asking for trouble. Okay, because there's a good chance here now this fleshes out into one big trading range. Yeah, and it's more likely to go back up. This will be a good situation, though, where you go, okay, I'm going to play that against the buy the bears, right? If it does take out that low, same thing, right? Let's trap in some of those bears. I, I always tell my students, think like the other side of the market. Think like the sellers here. Remember, could possibly range down here, trap in those bears and buy right back into it again, okay? We can play that song and dance all day tomorrow. Buying low, selling high, using stops as fuels. It's a relatively easy, you know, easy idea. It's just a little more difficult when you're right in the thick of it and you don't really know what you're doing yet, right? So not to worry. That's the game plan for us to sell off the high and possibly keep on buying off that low. Now, what if the market keeps on going higher here? right? What if you keep going higher? Really, to be honest with you, not much changes, right? Not much changes. We're already very high up right now. So we've already, we already know we're trying to buy that deep pullback. The only thing that would change here is if we do go higher is I would adjust my channel, right? So for example, right? If this, if this thing opens up in Asia and we start kind of grinding higher like that, what I'll do is I'll adjust my channel, right? To be a bit steeper, again, drawing it off the high, but I'm still going to be looking for really those those scenarios, right? Looking for that relatively deep pullback, right? Get down, remember, look for prior swings. I'm telling you guys right now, the easiest money you're gonna make is when you can combine a channel drawn backwards with those prior swings, under the prior swing, trap in those bears, same thing, right? Trap those bears in, buy it right back up to retest the high, right? And then from there, possible that short back down, think about that range flushing out from there. Okay, so keep it in mind there as we go. We may also see this market turn sideways. And again, this goes right along with the NASDAQ as well, right? NASDAQ and the S&P are very, very similar. So for example, the S&P right now has this gorgeous range above us here, 3790, 3770, that area right there, gorgeous range. The S&P, their real big objective right now, I would imagine is that 3820. Um, I get that level off a daily chart. Go back and look at a daily chart right now of the SPY or the E-mini S&P, and you'll see it's the it's the it's the it's the most previous major swing. Okay, so 38.20, 38.11 38.11.5, with that range. If the buyers can keep this, again, it's a long-term bear market, so you can't really expect that much overall. But if the buyers can hold this thing right now, you got to think that 39, you know, that 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 39, yeah, 3820 area, right, is definitely going to be a big objective here. Be aware though, on the S and P and the Nasdaq, we may keep going higher, and we may start going into a range up here. A lot of times, when we see a big move in one direction, rather than getting that deep pullback, we get a range. Ranges are not scary. Remember, if we go sideways in a range up here, what we're going to do is we're going to find levels of support below the range. Okay, this could be a channel level, right? Could be a channel. It's most of the time it's a swing level. And what we're going to do is is wait for that pullback. If I can get a range up here, that range acts like a magnet. And so we really can be a little more aggressive in those situations because ranges are so, again, they're, they're magnets, right? So if we go range bound and we pop down like this, think about everybody who wants to buy that pullback. They're going to be drooling over it. So what you want to do is, is you want to let those rookie sellers come in. Yeah, it's a, it's a long-term bear trend. Yeah, but not right now though, right? It's a, bull, it's a bullish into a range here. Trap in those bears. You're probably not going to need a two-try failure on that. You'll probably only need the bears to try once. Again, this is if we pop up and go sideways up here, right? If we keep going higher overnight, we get through the Asian, uh, th uh, you know, through the Asian news, the inflation number in Asia and China, right? We get through the earnings, we're going sideways up there. We trap in some of those bears, right? And we use the stops for fuel. One thing you got to be kind of aware of, though, let's say we do go higher here, and again, this is across the board for both the S and P and the Nasdaq. If we do go up into that trading range. And let's say, for example, that retail sales number comes out tomorrow morning, right? And we get a big, big push lower. Remember, anytime we see a real deep, deep pullback like this, what do the bears need to do to get a reversal? They have to hold that pullback and go, right? If they don't hold that pullback, it then flips into a one, a two, remember two tries. Why not? Why two tries? Because of the strength of that pullback. 
right? It's such a strong move lower. And again, this might come with earnings tomorrow. This might come with that retail sales number. This might be at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I don't know, right? But if we do go up, right, we, we start turning sideways, okay? Don't get scared. Just stay patient and wait for the pullback, right? If the pullback, again, if the pullback is a modest pullback, you know, kind of pulls back, I can get pretty aggressive there with a failure off the 21, right? Go back in the range. But if this thing just simply torches that, again, retail sales could be an example of tomorrow, then we don't sell it. We trap in the bears. One, two, use their stops as fuel. And then don't forget that channel because remember, they're going to want to go back and retest the high, right? So find that new channel, find those prior swings. You got that, right? That's, that's, it's, 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 it's one of those things, it's easy, it's easy to learn, a little more difficult to do, right? That's why our trade room is such a great uh, uh, resource for our students, right? It's simple to understand, but it's like a lot of things, right? But it's not as easy to do in the heat of the moment, right? The trick is, is don't let that sharp pullback fool you, right? Again, this is if we get stuck in that trading range. Trapping those bears, right, to try failure, and then grab that, you know, grab a trap, a failure, a pullback combo, all the same stuff you guys learn in that free trading course. And again, this can apply to the S&P and the NASDAQ uh, as well, right? So keep an eye, remember, if we if we race lower and hold, it becomes a reversal, right? If, if, if they race lower and grind down, it's a reversal, but until they hold, until they grind down, it's buy the dips, retest, short the rips, right, off the high, and keep looking for that trading range, very likely here as we go into the end of the week here, because it's such a big move that we saw today, and don't underestimate the power of those bears, right, because again, it's still very much a long-term uh, bear trend on the E-mini and the NASDAQ. Now, over to the real bulls, right? Over to the over to the oil. We talked about this last night. We of course, uh, uh, oil is the only one out of the uh, three amigos here today that are that are bullish long term. Uh, look at a four hour chart right now. You know, we we always talk about anytime we see a strong move in one direction, right? Look at a four hour chart right now of oil. Open up the SP. Oh, sorry, open up USO. Open up crude oil. Whatever you want to trade, right? There's a big strong blast higher from last week uh, uh, on the four hour, right? That gives me that bias because you know they want to retest that high here. Next is a strong move higher. Okay, now. You could also probably say this is a $4 move. I don't normally call $4 moves a big move on, on oil. If we're going five, six, seven dollars in a day, that's, 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 a, that's a big move, right? Like the S&P, that was a big move today on the S&P. I wouldn't classify this as a big move. Under $5, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a pretty big move, but you go back a few months and you, you, we, we saw nothing but five, six, seven dollar moves. So I wouldn't call it a huge move, but I would definitely call it a strong move. Move. And the reason why strong is so important is because you know, anytime we see a strong move, we're expecting a pullback and a retest of that level. Then, do we get the reversal off the high? Do we get a breakout to the highs here, right? Same thing we talked about already. Next one is a bull range. Now, I'm a little bit ahead of this one. I'm not quite sure 110% yet if that's a range, but it sure feels like it. You can sure, it sure feels like it, right? You get those double tops, double bottoms on a faster time frame. I'm sure this probably looks more range bound. Why is that important? Well, because ranges are magnets. And really, when I see a range up there, it kind of gives you a little more aggressive, not, not more aggressive, but it makes you more confident because I know that range is very likely here to want to pull back and snap back up into that trading range. And then, of course, and then, of course, you have my favorite dance move, the old pop and grind, right? The old, the old, the old pop and grind. We pop up. And this is a classic pop and grind here, right? It rips higher, and again, you right, rips higher, pops up, begins to grind. We're drawing off that high. I'm bringing it down off that low. A beautiful pop and grind channel, and of course, that gives us a lovely area there. Lines up. I love this area. I, my my favorite level for tomorrow is definitely the 8805, right? That's a prior high. It's also it's also that prior high right above that range that we saw. Oftentimes, when range just kind of break out like that. They'll love to come back and kind of tap those those levels that are just outside that trading range. So kind of a, kind of like a breakout pullback, right, for a range breakout. So if I had my choice tomorrow, that 8805 level would probably be the best buy zone or best pullback area right here for the bulls. So a lot of this is going to be very similar. We talked about earlier, right? Buyers want to buy the dips, right? Buyers can definitely buy the breakout higher. We have a bull target. This is last week's close, 
right? 93.20. Now, last week's close, you notice right now the S&P and the NASDAQ, they're, they're back to last week's close, right? NASDAQ, S&P are both back to their, their previous week's close here. You will notice that Thursday and Fridays, markets love to use the previous week's closing price, right? I don't really watch them very much during the middle of the week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, last week's close is not normally going to be a big objective, but once we turn the corner to Thursday and Friday, for whatever reason, that previous closing price from the previous, from the previous week is a very, very good magnet. That does seem to be a pretty big chunk, right? That's a pretty big bite to chew off of, but, you know, we have a lot going on right now. We got a lot going on right now. It looks like OPEC, Russia, the U.S. It looks like there's a little bit of turmoil brewing there right now. It almost feels like OPEC kind of purposely, right, cut their production. I, that's that's not me saying it, right? It's what it seems like, though, right? Maybe there was a little bit of behind the scenes there with Russia. So there definitely appears to be some turmoil brewing there. Who knows, right? Who knows? This could easily lead to a very bullish move here. Anyways, Buyers want to buy the pullback. What do bears want right now? Bears have to be careful because not only is this a long-term bull market, it's not the S&P and the NASDAQ, this is oil, right? And also to that strong move up, right? So bears, they have to really be careful. We can definitely look for a double top reversal off that high, although it will be a little more of a conservative trade. We'll talk about that in a moment. Or if we go lower, we really get a hold, right? Really get a hold there for the bears, to take control of this. So let's talk about this now. As we go lower, what you want to think about here is, is the strength of this move going down. Here are three scenarios you want to think about to buy this pullback. One, we run lower. This is kind of the one you want. This, this, one you, this is the one you, you kind of want, right? Or maybe not, maybe that you want, but this is probably the most common example of it. We pull back, we take out some of these lows, we test the low of that channel. Moving average comes down, bears come in, they foolishly try to sell short, which again, we all kind of know better, but you'd be amazed how easy it is to let that fool you in real time tomorrow morning. It's amazing how, how easy it is to let a, a sharp pullback like that all of a sudden make you abandon your whole entire game plan. I made those mistakes a lot when I was a new trader. Bottom line, though, is trapping those bears, grab that failure into that pullback combination, right? That failure into pullback, right? So trapping the bears, okay? And then, of course, grab that pullback, that failure as we go. That is kind of the simplest way to look at it. And again, we're going to go back up and retest that high. Now, what if we V bottom like this, right? What if we V bottom like this and we go right up like that? What do you do then? Yeah, remember, you don't want to buy high, right? You want to buy as low as you can. So if that failure turns into a, if, if that, it basically, if we V bottom off that low, right? If it really cooks off that low, be very careful with that failure. Look for that trap, right? Because traps are going to be your money maker to buy as low as you can, okay? Now, now this requires some experience, right? This requires a little bit of discretion. So again, our trade room is a great place to come out and make sure you're doing this the right way. Now, the, the, the third one. The third one is kind of the one we all want, right? We may not get it, but it's one we all want. What I want is, is I want a real sharp pullback. I wouldn't be surprised if they ran back into that range. Give a little, give a little love tap, right? Right in that range here. Now, remember, we just mentioned this. It's a range with a real strong move down. Okay, I don't know what's going to cause it. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. All I know is, is where the odds were my favor. Okay, that's all we know. Anybody who tells you they know what's going to happen tomorrow is either naive and they'll learn eventually or they're lying to you, right? Simple as that. Markets are way too complicated. There's way too much stuff going on right now. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I just know where the odds are firmly in my favor, where I can make some money on those odds in my favor. Now, as we go lower, strong move down. Right? Remember, in this case, trap in those bears, let them try twice. If that pullback is really strong and it cooks right below that 8805 area, you want to assume the bears are going to come in and try to run this thing lower. Let them try twice, hit those stops. Think about if I was a bear right now, where, where would I be throwing my keyboard, right? Where would I throw a mouse across? Where, where, where would my pain be, right? Not that I can do, not, not, not that I encourage that stuff, right? But that's where you want to be looking for the long, right? And then as we go higher, where does the market want to go? It wants to go back and take out that high. So again, find that new channel before you retest that high, right? That's your long right there. Very similar. And again, if we do pull back, 
And if they buy, if the Bears can muster up the strength to hold and run going lower, that's a one, two, three reversal. Remember, it doesn't matter how how deep or strong that pullback is. It's got to hold the pullback, right? Got to hold it. Once they do, mark that channel, drill down, find those levels, right? And again, first leg, third leg, right? Those lows are what we're trying to get to. Okay, or we take out that low, we grind, we grind, we grind. The grinder's an easy giveaway. Mark that low, mark that high. Don't miss that first test off that high, right? Don't miss that first test. And again, I'm keeping this pretty simple right now. You'll learn more about the entry patterns, the entry setups, the rules to use, the time frames to use. You'll learn more about stuff in that in that free video course. So keep that in mind here. If we keep going sideways right now, nothing changes. Okay, if we keep going sideways here, nothing changes. Shallow pullback trap, deep pullback two try, right? Nothing, nothing changes. What if we break out? Okay, well, first of all, though, what if we go sideways here? And by the way, this could all apply to the S&P and the NASDAQ as far as I'm certain too. What if we go sideways overnight, okay, and then we get a breakout? Okay, what does a breakout look like? Well, there's four different types of breakouts. We talk about those quite a bit on these videos, so I'll try not to not to uh, repeat too much on this. But the first one is the easy one. The first one's the one, two, three, right? So we pop up, we break out, we pull back to the 21, we hold the pullback, and we jump. The jump is the most important factor. We're not buying that. We're not buying high. We have to wait for that price to give me a reason to buy the pullback. Nice strong pullback, a nice strong move, and then grab that first test right off of that off of that low. Very, very realistic for tomorrow. We may chop around sideways. We may get some news overnight, some news tomorrow morning, and it may lead to a breakout. Again, a lot of geopolitical stuff going on right now. And again, oil is, is, is still trying to retest that big four-hour high that I mentioned earlier. That's a one, two, three breakout. Okay, another one here, another one. We chop around going sideways. We pop and we grind, right? You know this one already. Mark that high, mark that low. Don't miss that first test, right? Don't miss that first test. Again, first leg, third leg, right? Going to be your target up overhead. The second, third one, second one, third one, third one, right? Is the two try breakout. Strong move, real strong move, real strong, right? Real strong breakout. Shallow pullback. Higher high in price. Traps, baby. We call these two try traps or two try breakouts in certain situations like this. Remember, this one requires a very specific pattern setup. It's a strong move. It's a shallow pullback. The shallow pullback is what makes this trade work because it doesn't let anybody in. And then once we get that that higher high, that confirms it's not just a V top, right? Confirms it is the head fake, and that trap is it's usually pretty easy money, right? Usually pretty easy money. All right. And then, of course, the fourth one was if we just blast, right? If the market just rips overnight, what do we do? We go out, we find a bigger channel, right? Bigger channel. We wait for that deep pullback. How deep? Right when that little voice in your head says it's time to sell. Look for those bears to come in, trap them in, right? Trap them in below the moving average. Failure, pull back, back up to retest the high. So that if it just rips, right? If something happens overnight, adjust that channel, wait for that deep pullback, right? Get underneath the moving average, trapping those bears. And again, you'll see a lot of examples of that stuff in that free trading course. All right, guys? Again, I'm keeping it pretty simple here right now. We'll go into a lot more detail in our trade room, in our video classes. And don't forget, speaking of which, the game plan is the easy part, right? The game plan is the easy part. The hard part, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. If you're looking for a great place to learn and trade along, if you're missing too many good trades right now, if you're taking too many losses, you're going to love my trade room. I'll put all of the membership links. I'll put all the free course links. I'll put everything you need to come out and do it with me every day. I'll put that below the video tonight on the website. I'll put, I'll put it in the description of the YouTube video. So grab that link. Join the free course. Get started there. You're going to love that. And I'll be, and you'll be ready soon to trade with us here in our in our trade room. The fastest way to get help, the fastest way to get questions answered is to pick up the phone and call or use email. We have live chat on the website. And although I don't answer these questions as fast as I would like, you can always drop questions in the comment section below. Be aware, though, I, unfortunately, because of time constraints, I can't answer questions rapid fire on YouTube. But call the office. Use live chat. We're always there. My team's always there to help out. And uh, 
Great job today. Been a great week here. We're going to finish up more tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you use this knowledge, this strategy to make a killing tomorrow. Um, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and uh, give me a holler in the comment section below. I'd love to hear uh, how your week went as well. All right, guys. My name is Joseph. Get out of here. Get some rest. Who you got in the baseball playoffs? Who you got in the baseball playoffs? Well, we're just getting going, right? And, and boy, oh boy, don't forget, Halloween is only a few weeks away. That's your friendly reminder. Get that costume picked out or else you're, you're picking the bottom of the barrel here in a few weeks from now. So don't say I didn't warn you. Anyways, I would love to hear from the comment section. Give me a holler in the comments and I'll see you guys not tomorrow night. We'll come back and we'll resume our normal schedule next week in next week's video newsletter. My name is Joseph. Be well. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.